Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to Watch Card Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 20th, 2015. Now, if you normally follow my daily security bites, you probably noticed I didn't post any videos this week, and that's because I'm attending one of the US's biggest security conferences the RSA conference. To make up for it in this weekly summary video, I'll quickly cover three of the interesting security stories from the week, including some from the RSA conference itself. The week started with some updates from a number of security vendors about the White House and State Department breaches. First was FireEye who talked about the Russian doll campaign. They shared details about the spear phishing emails against the State Department. And the big news was the fact that the attackers used two zero-day vulnerabilities in these emails. One was a flash vulnerability that allowed an attacker to execute code on your machine. Another one was a Microsoft Windows vulnerability that allows an attacker to elevate his privileges. Now the good news is the previously zero-day flash flaw was fixed last Tuesday, so if you haven't got that flash update, you might want to go get it now. Microsoft hasn't fixed the elevation of privilege flaw yet, but the good news there is someone already has to have access to your computer in order to exploit that. Besides that, uh, two other researchers, Trent and Kaspersky, shared details about the malware used in this campaign. For instance, Kaspersky calls it Cozy Duke, and they talk about how it works. It is advanced malware. It uses a number of techniques to try to evade traditional security and traditional antivirus defenses. The good news is if you do have antivirus, Virus, it probably will catch it today. But more importantly, if you have something like WatchGuard's APT blocker, which is capable of catching new malware using sandboxing and behavioral detection techniques, you're safe from this malware even when it first comes out. Next up is one of the better RSA presentations. Two researchers, Charles Henderson and David Byrne, gave a good talk on the state of point of sale security. They covered all kinds of issues with point of sale devices, you know, ranging from physical physical security issues where outsiders have too easy access to these systems to many different vendor configuration and security issues. For instance, one of the big takeaways here was a well-known vendor that makes a point of sale system that's been in use from 1990 has a default or hard-coded password of I believe it was 166816 or Z66816 and according to these vendors this password has been used on this system from the 1990s and they encounter it as the default password on 90% of the systems they touch. So this is a great illustration of why you need to always change default passwords. More importantly, vendors should never hard code administrative passwords that can't be changed in systems. By the way, the researchers did not name the vendor that happened to use this password. However, one of the articles that came out after the talk, uh, the journalist alleged that it seems to be associated with Verifone equipment. Anyways, the practical tip here is whenever you get any sort of new networking or computing gear, always change the default password. And if the gear has a password you can't change, that's a good sign that you probably don't want to work with that vendor in the future. For the last story, I just want to quickly point out a very interesting and sophisticated side channel attack that was proposed from researchers at Cornell University. Now, if you remember a side channel attack, this is where an attacker can learn information about your system based on some sort of emission. And it could be electromagnetic frequencies coming from your monitor. It can be noise your system's making. It can be the heat from your system, like in a recent story about Bitwhisper. Or it can be even things like blinking lights on your hard drive that give away details about what's going on in your hard drive. Anyways, one of the most interesting and new side channel attacks has to do with your computer or CPU's cache. Basically, if an unprivileged attacker on a system can gain certain access to the CPU's cache, by monitoring the cache, the attacker can figure out what's happening in other processes. Or if you're in a virtual environment, one guest virtual machine can monitor the cache of the system to figure out what's going on in another virtual environment. Now, in the past, to do this sort of cache side channel attack, the attacker had to get malware on the computer. 
However, in this new Cornell University research, these Cornell researchers found a novel new way to exploit this sort of side channel attack. Rather than having you install malware on your computer, if the attacker can get you to an HTML5 site that has JavaScript, these researchers figured out how JavaScript could gain enough access to your computer's cache to carry out this sort of, of side channel attack. And by monitoring the cache, they could learn what you were doing on your computer. So really, it's a much more practical way to exploit this vulnerability. It doesn't rely on getting malware on your computer. And by the way, they did a research on what browsers were vulnerable, and they found about 80% of the browsers out there could be used to carry out this side channel attack. Now, this is really a complex attack, so I can't go into it in a ton of detail. But if you're interested in those technical details, I highly recommend you check out Cornell's research paper. It has a lot of great information that you might find interesting. I'll make sure to post a link to it in the blog post associated with this video. Well, that's it for this week's short video. I hope you found it interesting. As always, you can find these videos and a lot of other content at our blog, which is blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. Be sure to subscribe to it and tell your friends about it. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, be sure to follow our YouTube channel if you want the videos as quick as they come out. One last thing, as I mentioned in my videos last week, I will be at another conference next week as well. So I still may not be able to post my daily videos as quickly, but I'll certainly post a weekly summary video at the very least. And I'll return to my normal videos the week after next. As always, thanks for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.